I have missed you guys so much and I am so encouraged to keep on posting. Um, so I figured I have a few minutes. I'm going to just talk to you guys for a little bit. Um, it's February, so happy Black History Month to all my brothers and sisters. Um, yeah, all of you. Um, and also, it's the season of love. Um, so happy love month. Um, you know, every day should be a day when you're spreading love. And because that is the mission um, of hashtag love thyself, the movement, um, I would like to tell you that I love you. You are appreciated and you are so special to me. So today we're going to talk about love um, just for a few minutes. So in my book, which hashtag love thyself, if you have not heard of it or seen it before, here it is. You can find it on my website, which the link is always in the bio. Um, and you can also click the link on my page, but it is www.thelovethyselfmovementshop.com. You can buy it off of there. Or if you Google it, you'll find it. Um, it's on all major distributing um websites and things like that but um hashtag love thyself so in the spirit of love I wrote um really a spoken word um called love and I'm going to read that to you and then we'll talk about loving yourself note to self I have a secret and it's burning a hole in my chest but it's being contained and protected by fear and a bulletproof vest see I'm in love with the idea of you give me a moment and let me explain this to you see when I first saw you I was actually disgusted you were not the picture of beauty I imagined trusting and trusted words of others to assign you descriptors, took in societal lies and con considered them holy scriptures, but the lies only multiplied with your weight. Gaining every ounce of insecurity your scale could take. Low key, I watched you listen to imperfect beings disguised as perfect being insecure themselves. Heard you cry out to God to change you externally while internally broken, searching for solutions in the books on the mind in your mind shelves. Yet, I love the thought of you. The real you that God designed from the start, the beautiful soul with a great big heart, infatuated with the fragrance of your faith in God, entangled by the web of your purely awkward brilliance, overwhelmed by the sight of God, God's hand on your face and the sound of your love for his amazing grace. I see you. Stretch marks like Christ who stretched the mark of salvation down on your life ever portraying the attributes of a virtuous wife, head held high authority in your speech, the praises of the most high God on your tongue you keep. So I guess the secret's out. You are finally me. I am created by abundance filled with resilience was shaped in iniquity but saved from sin confidently yet imperfectly slaying my melanin i refuse to suppress success or restrict relationship due to fear i am here It took me a little minute to get to that place where I could say, I'm here. Like, I have arrived, right? Um, but the arrival um, was not really the destination for me. I know that's real deep. But let me go back. In the journey to learning to love yourself, um, there's going to be hurdles and whether or not you jump those hurdles 
is up to you. Um, I was in my book actually, uh, and the first part of it is called, you know, the first chapter is the Lady Genesis or, you know, the beginning, right? So I remember um, being in elementary school and I was like this little happy kid, you know, still tall kid, you know, tall, big kid, you know. Um, but I was, my mom, you know, she would always tell me, like, you are so helpful with everything, you know. Um, I was e- even younger than elementary school. Um, she, you know, in the book I wrote about her telling me, um, she worked at a daycare um, within Camden County College, I think it was. And as a toddler, I was helping change diapers. <laughs> like, I'm just always doing something. Like, I always want to be helpful and I always, you know, want to be with people and, and giving of myself. Um, so then to grow up and having that helpful nature, um, I'm in elementary school and I have this amazing friend um, who happened to be um, a special needs student. Um, she was a teenager and we were like, I think I was in, let me see, I must have been in like kindergarten or second grade or something like that. And my friend Andrea was, she was like 12 or 13 um, in our class, but she was like the most, she was the sweetest person ever, right? She was larger than all of us. She was, you know, grown. She had featured, you know, she looked like a teen because she was a teenager. But her cognitive level was um, lower. It it wasn't as advanced as other teenagers, right? So I remember not even thinking about her appearance. Not even thinking about, oh, she looks different than us. Not really um, taking into consideration that this is a grown kid (laughs) like I'm a little kid she's a grown kid and um, like I didn't take any of that into consideration but it was it was just us working together and I would help her out and you know still get my work done and you know I was doing stuff that my teacher asked me like it was just a natural thing I did not care you know nobody picked on her nobody excuse me nobody said wow she's big like it was just we're all here to learn we're all in this together we're all trying to get from one place to the next and for us that was learning whatever our teachers gave us and being promoted to the next grade um, the next stage in our education that was it it wasn't until I was in probably about seventh grade or no I'll say fifth grade. Um, When I was in about fifth grade, um, fourth grade, I started gaining weight. (laughs) Uh, I I started becoming a little chunker. And, you know, little by little, (laughs) you know, these things, these things happen. So I started gaining, I was a normal sized kid, but like, um, I started gaining weight around fourth grade. And for me, you know, coming up in a family where all the women, in my family have hips they got butt they got boobs they got thighs for days okay like all of them so growing up around that for me it was kind of like cool like my mama my mama chunky so you know that's cool um you know whatever and it what but it wasn't until about fourth grade when my weight started picking up and then fifth grade when you are in that mode of like trying to figure yourself out your body starts changing a little bit but but in my case um I look like I was in fourth grade from the time I was in fourth grade until I was about in seventh grade so in my book I make fun of it because um from those 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 ages fourth to eighth grade fourth to about seventh grade I had not developed like other girls I was just tall Um, (laughs) I was just tall and chubby. (laughs) There was no shape. There was nothing. Like, it was just cardboard box, okay? So, you know, growing up with that type of thing. And then, not even just so much the appearance, but the mindset of it all. Um, I went from, of course, you know, again, 
having that friend and she, you know, she looked different, but I didn't care. And we were just friends to like thinking that would just kind of carry on. But it was like something changed because I started to compare what I had, um, to what others were experienced. I started to compare my experience or my growth, uh, or lack thereof, um, <laughs> with the other girls, you know? Um, so it, it was like really challenging for me, um, to grow up and just be contented with myself and be happy with myself because from my, uh, measurement and from my view, it was like, man, I'm not keeping up, you know, with them and, and they're, you know, they're advancing more than I am and I don't get it. Like, you know, what can I, like, I'm not good enough, you know? And there was always, you know, those positive um, influences and things like that. And, and and they're telling, you know, you're beautiful. You're doing the right thing. You know, keep your focus on your studies and it'll happen when it's supposed to. But in my head, I'm like, look, <laughs> I hear you. But my friends go bra shopping together and I can't because I ain't got none. Uh, <laughs> like, God, where's mine? <laughs> like, there was, it was just all these different things, but, um, you know, it was, it was, it took me a while. It took me, like I said earlier, it took the journey for me to get to a place where I'm like, okay, if I'm going to love myself, um, one, of course, knowing where love comes from. So, of course, we talked about that. God is, God is the source of real love. So I, you know, I know that and I'm in church school and, and I'm getting all these lessons from my parents and, you know, different influences, godparents, everything, but loving me and appreciating me for where I was in my life, um, it took me years, right? And brought me to the lesson for today and the lesson of love, right? Stop comparing yourself and what you have to what others have of course there's nothing new under the sun that's what the word says right so it is relatively um difficult to not you know not see others um and be like man i wish you know you know well at this stage they were doing um but there will come a point where you're just like okay Maybe I didn't make it to that point at that age. However, there is a place where I will, right? And it's really and truly, if I can be absolutely honest, it's a conscious decision that you have to make. Just stop. I wanted what they had had because I wanted to, you know, experience what they had. I wanted to look, you know, look that way because that is the stereotypical way a person should, whatever. I want to sound like this person sounds. I want to be dainty and small like the rest of the girls, you know, or I want to be taller, like the taller, whatever it is, whatever is the thing that you wish you could measure up to that compares to other people, you cannot do that because again, you have a lane, right? You have a gift. You were specifically made specially. So when you're comparing yourself to something else, it's like you're discounting the greatness that was given to you at birth. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I still ain't want boobs like the rest of my friends. Um, I still wanted to be shapely like a woman and you're going to have those moments where you're like, okay, but I want to, you know, I want to kind of fit in, but it doesn't always have to be that way. And in the journey, this is the big takeaway of all the rambling, right? In the journey, if you take nothing else, do not compare yourself or your experience where you're at at this moment or you know, where you were, whatever to anyone else's because your journey is yours, right? Loving yourself takes time. Um, but it's not so much what you're doing as it is what you're choosing to do. I hope that's clear. You can, you know, you know, you can stand in front of the mirror and you can give affirmations and you can, you know, hug yourself every day and you can make yourself look beautiful and, you know, or handsome. You can, you know, put on the best things. You can buy the most expensive items, all of that. But at the end of the day, it is a choice. You have to choose. Okay. I may not like me today, 
right? I may not like what I look like today. I may not like what I feel like today. Inside of me, I may be like, you know what? Hmm, yeah, I'm not really liking you. Okay, cool. No problem. But I am going to make a conscious decision that today I am going to choose happiness. Today I'm going to do something that's going to make me smile. Because in loving yourself and in making yourself smile, that will rub off on someone else. Short story, and I'm going to be out y'all here. Um, not even a story, really. Um, a lot has happened in February for me, which I'll talk about at a later time. Um, major loss happened in February. Major. Um, and it is, it was like always a celebratory month um, until the loss happened. So now, February is the worst month of all <laughs> in my mind and for several years it's kind of been like oh here we go again here we go again but this year even in that knowing that it was sad for me I say you know what I am going to I have to be intentional about my happiness I have to be intentional about being okay with where I am it's not a perfect place I wish it was different can't change it okay cool so I'm going to do something that will influence my um, level of contentment um, not complacency but my level of contentment and happiness I'm going to be intentional about moving and growing right that is the same thing that we have to do in the journey. In the journey that continues, literally, I'm not in a perfect place. The journey that continues of loving yourself, you have to make a decision. First thing, you have to make that decision that when I get up in the morning, if I am blessed to open my eyes again, I am going to appreciate where I'm at, even if it's not perfect. Okay, so we're going to continue this on our next video. Please share this, like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you're liking the content, comment below. Um, I love you so much for watching. Um, thank you so much for all the people who have either called me or messaged me or, you know, left a comment. Thank you so much for that. I am super, super encouraged, and I hope that you are as well. Remember to love God because he is the source of real love. Remember to love yourself love yourself appreciate who you are and who god created you to be and remember to love other people because that's what keeps the world going around i love you bye